Hi everybody, today we are going to cover multi-criteria decision-making method of analytic hierarchy process which is a very well known and popular method in this field and it is developed by Professor Thomas Seti in 1970s. Uh, this method will cover several parts in, in this video series and the first part is devoted to the priority weights of the decision variables. I'm Dr. Mehmet Kırmızı. So the scope of this method, the scope of the analytic hierarchy method is to determine the importance weights of decision variables and selecting or ranking the alternatives with respect to the determined decision variables. It has four main steps. And the first step is the identification of the decision problem, which is among the steps of most of the decision making uh, methods, multi-criteria methods. So the first sub-step is the goal definition and the identification of the decision variables and alternatives. And at the final stage, construction of the decision hierarchy when these three items are determined. Then we will going to construct the pairwise comparison matrix, uh, which comes from the questionnaires handed out to the decision makers. And then with the data given by the decision makers, we will determine the importance weights of the decision variables by normalizing the comparison matrix, calculating eigenvector and eigenvalue, and co then consistency index and consistency ratio. Then at the final stage, we are going to select the best alternative. So here is an example of a decision problem and uh, it consists of layers so the highest level is the goal of our decision problem and then the below level is the decision variables so we will going to determine the decision variables with respect to our goal and the, in the third level we will determine our alternatives to select so here we are going to cover this method with a solid example of investing in a stock so you decided to make an investment in a stock and you are not sure which one to select and you search in the literature or in the internet and you figure out four decision variables are important to select a stock and then you want to select uh, one of these five stocks so here is your alternatives and you created the decision problem as in this way once we have created the decision problem then we will going to construct the comparison matrix so the comparison matrix is as you can see in the presentation the first row is the decision variables and the first column is also the decision variables and you create a matrix which uh, the diagonal is one in this comparisons and then below lower side of the diagonal is the reciprocals of the upper side and you, the decision maker makes the evaluations with respect to the intensity of importance scale which is developed by Sati and you can also call it Sati's one nine scale as you can see here, the numbers are the intensities of the importance and you can distinguish the meanings from this linguistic variables and also these numbers are the intermediate values. If a decision maker are, is not sure about selecting, let's say one or three, and it's, so the decision maker choose the intermediate values to determine the comparisons. In order to create the comparison matrix, we need to collect data from decision makers. And the comparison matrix, the questionnaire of data collection part uh, is consisting of a number of questions and we determined this with this basic formula n is the number of criteria and n times n minus 1 over divided by 2 is the number of pairwise comparisons in our questionnaire. Here in this example we have four decision 
variables and we will have six questions in our questionnaire and here is a sample questionnaire how we develop the questionnaire is you ask to the decision maker which criterion is considered more important and how much important therefore the decision maker should select one of them and also evaluate the intensity of importance when compared to the other criteria here uh, one is in the middle of the questionnaire and as you can see the right side and the left side is the mirrored according to the one nine scale and here the decision maker thinks that criterion two is more important than criterion one and it has strong importance because it is selected five it has strong importance than criterion one so let's develop our pairwise comparison matrix with respect to the real questionnaire here is our real questionnaire and we develop this questionnaire in such a way that we can make use of the comparison matrix as you can see the empty slots which is upper side of the diagonal and you can make pairwise comparisons so you compare each deci decision variable in pay you, you do the pairwise comparisons as you can see here just keep in mind the empty slots in this comparison matrix and let's select the first row of the cash flow and you compare it with PE ratio debt equity ratio and net profit margin as you can see here cash flow is compared to PE ratio debt equity ratio net profit margin and then PE ratio is compared to debt equity ratio and net profit margin here you see debt equity ratio and net profit margins compared to PE ratio then debt equity ratio is compared to net profit margin just to remember the upper side of the diagonal here and let's try to fill out the comparison matrix so here is the first comparison pairwise comparison and the decision maker considered that cash flow is more important and has very strong importance than p ratio which is equal to seven and seven goes to the intersection cell of cash flow and p ratio in the upper side of the diagonal and then uh, as you remember that the lower side of the diagonal is the reciprocal of the of this value and here again in the intersection cell of the cash flow and p ratio it is one over seven and in the second example this time debt equity ratio is more important and has strong importance than cash flow so this time cash flow is not more important debt equity is more important just focus on this point here in the intersection cell it is it starts with now one divided by five and then its reciprocal is five in the intersection cell here in this comparison cash flow and net profit margin has equal importance therefore one goes to the intersection cell and also the reciprocal is the same and then here the full part of the comparison matrix just exercise the remaining parts and you can understand how we create this comparison matrix according to the questionnaire this is not a difficult part just try to understand just try to make sure that you developed it by yourself and let's start to calculate the importance weights of the decision variables so the first step is the normalization of the comparison matrix here is the comparison matrix and we use this formula and we develop we create the normalized comparison matrix and this formula is, is very simple don't get confused about that here is the row sum uh, column sums and then here is the element of 
each cell in the comparison matrix and this formula says that divide each cell to its column sum let's do it in the comparison matrix here is our comparison matrix that we created by using the questionnaires and here we make the column sums so 7.143 is the column sum of cash flow and here 20 is the column sum of p ratio and the rest is like that and then here just an example of one column so each cell in this specific column is divided by its column sum here one divided by 7.143 one over seven is divided by seven point again one four three five is divided by the column sum and one is divided by the column sum here is the just a simple uh, calculation for the first part and you we will have the normalized comparison matrix by doing the same step for each column here here is the normalized comparison matrix then we use this matrix the com normalized matrix to determine the eigenvectors and this for we use this formula and it says the average of each row so this formula is the average of each row here our normalized comparison matrix that we calculated in the previous slides and here says the upper side says that sum of the rows and we do the sums is divided by the number of criteria and divide by four Actually, this is the average of this first row and second row, third row, fourth row with respect to the decision variables. And we calculate the eigenvectors, which shows the importance weights of the decision variables. Here in this fictitious, fictitious example, we, the depth equity ratio is the most important decision variable and 0.647 or you can say 64.7% and the sum of the eigenvector is equal to 1 or 100% you can use in this way and the second most important criteria cash flow then net profit margin and the least important one is the p ratio here are eigenvector or the importance weights of decision variables so far we have calculated the decision decision importance weights but this is not enough we have to show if the decision maker is consistent when filling out the questionnaire when in in the process of decision making so we calculate the consistency index and consistency ratio so to calculate in order to calculate the consistency ratio first we have to calculate eigenvalues and we use the comparison matrix the first matrix and the matrix product and here w is the eigenvector when uh, which we calculated in the previous slide we do the matrix product and we calculate the eigenvalue so let's do how we do the matrix products in this example here are comparison matrix and here is the eigenvector so multiply each cell of the comparison matrix that belongs to the same row and each cell of the eigenvector so 1 times 0.184 plus 7 times here the second row 0.046 plus 1 over 5 times 0.647 plus 1 times 0.124 here is the sum of the multiplications and you do the same calculation for each row in the comparison matrix here multiply by this and write the eigenvalue value here so 
we calculate the eigenvalues in this way. And then we find the largest eigenvalue, which is v prime, w prime is the eigenvalue divided by the eigenvector. And the sum of these ratios divided by to the number of criteria or the averages gives us the largest eigenvalue. And now here is the eigenvalue, here is the eigenvector. So divide each one of the cells and at the final stage sum of these ratios divided by number of criteria. Let's do the calculations. Here is the first one eigenvalue 0.756 divided by the first eigenvector 0.184 as you can see here plus this number divided by this plus this number divided by this plus and this number divided by this plus so this we calculate the sums and then we divide the sum of these values to the number of criteria and here is the largest eigenvalue 4.22 and we calculate the consistency index by using the largest eigenvalue and the number of criteria so lambda max minus n divided by n minus 1 and here is the lambda max the large second value and number of criteria so we obtain 0 0.075 as consistency index here is the random index which is a given table just you select the random index with respect to the decision variables so in this example we have four decision variables and the random index is 0.89 so this is a given table so you can use this table and consistency ratio is calculated by dividing consistency index by random index so the consistency index here the number 0 0.075 and divided by 0 0.89 so we calculate 0 0.07 as consistency ratio then how we can make sure if this value gives us a consistent or inconsistent evaluation if the consistency ratio is smaller than, than 0.1 then we can say that the decision maker is consistent in the evaluation of the questionnaires or this uh, pairwise comparison if it is higher than 0.1 then we can say so decision maker makes inconsistent evaluation and we can go back to the decision maker and ask to re-evaluate the pairwise comparisons just to capture the inconsistency so we can make sure that the decision maker make consistent evaluations so what is what does consistency and inconsistent mean so let's say we have three decision variables a b c and the decision maker says that a is more important than b and the second statement is that b, b is more important than c and for the third evaluation if the decision maker says a is more important than c this time the decision maker is consistent however if decision maker selects that c is more important than a then the decision maker is inconsistent based on the previous evaluations previous uh, pairwise comparisons just to uh, remember this methodology a is more important than b then b is more important than c and at the final comparison a should be more important than c not c is more important than a thank you everybody